somebody, somebody can check me over there. Every day, nonstop. We got media right now before we head out uh, to practice, but uh, it's gonna be a fun day. You know, we gotta get ready for our game tomorrow for LSU, and it's, I hope uh, everybody in Spark Nation tunes in. Go Green! Hopefully, I can get put together four assists out there tomorrow. <laughs> hey, come on in here, man. Come on in here. You're proud of what you've done so far, but I ain't satisfied. Don't let me be satisfied. Don't, don't expect me to be satisfied. We have just as good a chance as anybody else. I want to go out and practice like we're a confident machine, okay? Family on three, one, two, three. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Hey, come say hello to him, guys. And hey, we're out of here. We're out of here. Nice How are you? Nice to see you. Good to see you. How's it going? How's it going? Great walk through, we're ready to play. Let's go play. Let's go, family on three. One, two, three. Hey, hey, hey. Go, let's go. scenario, a better scenario than all the crap we've been through. Well, we got a chance to beat the overall number one seed. Now we don't have to worry about it anymore. We don't have to not talk about it. Um, you live it, dream it, sleep it, but maybe understand one thing. They are not any world beater. When you come down here tomorrow, you know, have some energy, you know, there are not many people that are be playing <laughs> Saturday and Sunday. We're going to be ready to play. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Get some sleep, guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't do slurred, man. Wait on. Hey! You got it. Yeah. Got done with our open gym practice, about to be working some media. All of us ready for tomorrow. Y'all better be there supporting or watching us on TV. It's just another team we gotta face, another good team we gotta face on. Coming from DC, just got done with practice, you know, heading to the bus right now. Got some good media in too. Uh, just getting ready for the Elite Eight tomorrow and uh, looking forward to the game. Well, I'm just, I'm just proud of you, first of all. I've seen the growth, and you have to remember, this is your moment. You get to write your own Spartan history today. Cash it, you're going to lead us, baby. Come yes, on. Sir. You've yes, been sir. the leader all year, Big Ten Player of the Year. Shoot. What, what we do? What we do, Cash? Family on three, man. One, two, three. Family. Family. All right, have fun, man. This is all your right. time. Bro, <laughs> right. 
I'm from Kenya, which is a country in the east coast of Africa. I'm from the Kalenjin tribe, which is the, the popular tribe in Kenya known for running. And growing up in primary school, kids would look at me and be like, oh, he's, uh, he's going to be a great you know, distance runner. And I'd, I'd look at myself, you know, I, I'm not that good at distance running right now. I'm pretty good at sprinting. I, you know, so that was already a big part, even at a young age, because my dad was a runner at the time. He came here when I was uh, 12, turning 13 in 2010. Um, I've been here for about nine years. In Kenya, man, school is like the number one thing that um, growing up that I remember. That was pretty much from Monday to Saturday. That was what we lived and breathed. And then on Sundays, it was church. Everybody's always outside. No one's like inside doing stuff. <laughs> school is different. You have to wear uniforms and stuff like that. And then it was mostly like family, like grandmas, like grandpas, like we were all close. Before I moved to Nairobi, I was um, staying with my grandma. We all pretty much lived together, our cousins, we all stayed together, and then kind of branched out, um, moved on out. My dad moved here when I was about seven years old, and I just remember uh, him packing his bags, and I was like, well, I, don't, I, I couldn't understand what was going on at the time. I was super young, my sister was even younger. Uh, where we stayed at, we were very close to the airport, so anytime a plane would pass by, um, I'd look up and me and my sister would be like, you know, dad's probably on that flight right now. Sometimes he would like take me outside and like, look at the airplanes, like he's coming back. Months and months would pass and we'd be like, oh, he's on that flight, he's on that flight, he's on his way to, you know, the U.S. Years went by and I finally started to understand that, you, you know, he's probably not gonna be coming back soon, but we know where he's at, we know he's doing fine. I'd see a plane passing by and, and then I was thinking, that's the direction, that's the way to the U.S. <laughs> That would be number 19, Allie Walker, the sophomore from Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. Just for a side hustle, judges championship Holston. There's things you can't coach. You can't coach speed. You can't coach mental toughness of being raised on a farm. I think having a farm background is a difference maker. Hey, no question about it. So I grew up in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin on a family farm. It's run by my grandpa and his three sons, so my dad and his uncles and his father. And we milk about 100 cows and we farm 800 acres and it's a big family operation. All the cousins, all the families help out all the time. Now that's where I fell in love with the dairy industry and with animals. I basically started off as a little kid when I was five showing my first calf at the local show, and it bloomed from there, and I've been showing ever since. Leading up to the show, you're practicing with the calf, leading it around on a halter, um, getting it used to humans and all the distractions that are outside, and you're giving it daily baths, trying to get, keep its hair really clean and white and shiny. And when you're at the show, you're in a barn with all the other farms that bring theirs, and the cattle are tied up in rows. On show day, they get a special feed that really fills up their stomach and shows any of their flaws and shows off all of their good parts. So when you go into the ring, the judge will stand in the middle. Each person leads a calf in, starting clockwise, and it's just a big circle of cows walking around the judge and he carefully inspects everyone. The judge depicts on their confirmation, kind of like a dog show. Uh, you want them to match the breed standard as much as possible. First and second place from each class will come in and compete for like overall champion. No, I, I'm, like, I'm even surprised there's free parking out there, so. Well, we didn't yeah. get that. We parked, <laughs> we parked a mile Over from here. <laughs> kids at school would be like, he's abroad is the word they'd use, he's abroad. I didn't get the bigger picture at the time, but it was, it was, it was cool, you know. As, as we were getting ready to come here, it was my time to be the cool one to go to the U.S. And then when I finally got here, I finally got the big picture after that. It wasn't really much of a choice for me to come here. My mom was the one that arranged all this, but I was still excited. First time on a plane, I was... Uh, <laughs> I was excited, way too excited. Forgot to say goodbye to most of my, you know, my family and my friends back at home. When I got here, I uh, <laughs> I didn't really enjoy running. Uh, I was 
My dad wanted me to do it, my mom wanted me to do it. They were insistent of me doing it. I wasn't really 100% in doing it, so my freshman year I just decided to join for the fun of it, and I did, and then um, sophomore year I decided not to do it again because I wasn't having as much fun. Then junior year came around and I was like, I'll give this you know, a go again. And from then on, I was, I was good at it. And then I was like, this could be my future. I just look up to like his hard work and dedication. Like with running in school, he like did it all by himself because my parents did help him, help him, but like he did it all by himself. And it's just, that's what I look up to, like his hard work and everything. Spartan Invite came around and I had a really big race, a big time, a new PR, you know, number one in the conference at that time. And then Coach Sinekevich came up and walked to me and talked to me about Michigan State and what they were looking for and they, were, they seemed interested in me. That opened my eyes, I was like, wow, I could be a Spartan, I could run for Michigan State. I adored Michigan State at the time and they seemed really passionate about me and I was very passionate about Michigan State as well at the time. He moved well. He looked like someone who could be good. You know, we, we knew it was going to take a while. There was going to be a long play in this. He had a couple of races that were, were sort of indicators that he was going to be pretty good. I remember just being here, and the teammates were awesome. The coaches were awesome. Um, you know, it's a Big Ten school. The academics are going to be awesome as well. It turned out to be the perfect place for me, and I, I best decision I ever made in my life was to come here. Nice to call. Justin, find a mechanical pattern here a little bit. Find a mechanical your shoulders back. Find a nice calm pattern. Two steps, breathe in. You gotta find a breathing pattern. He loved to race and he's always loved to race. And he had to adjust to a lot of stuff. I think, you know, school and, and, and the rigidity of, of his schedule, there, there are a variety of things. And his growth has just been immense. It's been really fun to watch. Coming in, freshman year, I was I had no idea what I was stepping into at the time, but I struggled a little bit with like, academics and athletics. Go that first year, it was, you know, it was tough, but then second semester came by and then I started, you know, to finally understand the things that I needed to do, you know, get on the schedule. Freshman year, track season, I was, I was thinking this is going to be fun because I, I posted a really fast time in the 1500. I ran pretty sure 349, which is a four or six mile, so I was thinking, this is going to be good as long as I, you know, follow the plans that I needed to do, do the right things that I needed to do. Coming in here, I was, this is the Big Ten, this is going to be tough. I got my first Big Ten medal in the DMR. I, I was so excited. That was like the first light of, you know, success for me. I was second in the 1500, which I was at peace with that. I wish I would have won. In my third year, that's when I, fr you know, finally had the biggest accomplishment in my career. For the first time in 40 years, the Spartans have a Big Ten champion in the 1500 meters. It was a well-executed race all around. He knew what he was doing. He got in on the rail at the beginning. With about 600 to go, he moved to the... He's been a really good team guy and, and evolved as an athlete every year. To this year, one of the things last year, he finished seventh. He was only, you know, a couple steps from the win. And I said, you know, the guys that are are better than you on, on this day all ran cross country better than you. And he really took that as sort of a challenge. This year he was all conference in cross country, he was all region in cross country, and, and had a really, I thought, was clearly his best. I think he's evolved in a lot of ways. He, he's embraced training and sort of really recognizes now wh what he needs in training to help him be ready for, for those championship events. It's been wonderful ever since that 349 freshman year when I saw you know, this is gonna be this is gonna be fun here. This is gonna be awesome. I take it back to that point where I, I, I ran that 3:49. I'm thinking, if that didn't happen, who knows what I'd be doing right now? You gotta be nice and calm here, boys. If we're gonna run aggressively, you gotta do it with a calm manner. 100% trust Coach with everything that he's done for me. I've never questioned him. On the other side, there's uh, the Coach Drent side where um, he's still a very wise man. Uh, through that, he is. Um, Pretty much, I'd say, nurtured me the last five years here. I'd say I'm more of a man now than I was, you know, in high school, and that's all thanks to the guidance of Coach Strength. He, he's all you need to listen to to become, you know, a better person. I, I think he's embraced, you, you know, all the things that I challenged him for, and, and, and the fact that he trusted me, he continued to evolve. If I would have, if he hadn't trusted me, and that, that's credit to him. We talked a, a couple of years ago about running in the USA Championships. And I said, you have to be a citizen for that. And he's like, that's gonna come. And then last year he said, hey, I'm taking the class.
My family has always encouraged me and all my other cousins to get involved with things outside of the farm. We all enjoy the farm just as much as we did when we were little. When I started playing softball, it was kind of just a fun thing on the side. But then as it started to get more serious, I got a little more excited about it. And my brother was getting good at baseball. We actually built a backstop at the farm so we could practice our pitching and our hitting and all that. And as that went on, we started to get involved in some travel teams and things like that. And so it was a little bit harder to stay as involved on the farm, but the rest of the family knew that we needed these sports to help us out with the rest of our life and like our future. So they were there to make sure everything kept going on the farm. Coach Jay has been really excited to hear everything I have to say about animals. Every time I open my mouth, she's always interested in what I have to say. Every time I have a lab, she'll say, oh, what'd you do in class today? Do you have any pictures of the animals? And I think she's just really excited to have somebody that's a little bit more diverse than some of the others. Obviously, when I saw that MSU had the animal science program and one of the best ones in the country, that was kind of my deciding factor that I really wanted to come here. They have some awesome opportunities, not only in the athletics, but also in the in the agriculture world. The opportunities here are endless, and there's so many different things I can do. As the years go on, I plan to get more involved with all of the different little projects and maybe even work here on the farm a little bit. I definitely learned about hard work and how a hard work ethic can get you to the top. And um, another thing is that there's never immediate change. It takes many months for a heifer to develop from just a little baby calf into the great show heifer we think she is. And that kind of resonates with the softball aspect as well. I didn't become a great pitcher the first day I started. And so that has really helped me to understand the process and go along with it as we go. That decision, man, that was one of the toughest decisions that I've had to make in a while. I've always been proud of being Kenyan. That's who I am. Um, and nothing will ever take that away from me. But then there's also the aspect of, you know, my, my family, they're all Kenyan Americans. They had U.S. citizenships. My coaches and my mom, they made it clear that he wanted me to pursue this path. He really wanted to be a citizen. And he tried so hard and like went like talk to my mom about it and like the whole process just making sure everything is good. I was challenged. I've always looked at you know Kenyan athletes in, on the track running and at the Olympics, the world championships and win you know win gold in a Kenyan singlet. The United States District Court for the Western District, District of Michigan is now in session. But then there was the other side of me saying you've you've been in America for almost 10 years. Inside you, you've grown up as an American. You should be proud to be American as well and I'd still be very proud, you know, to have a U.S. singlet on, you know, on my chest and win a gold medal in, with a U.S. jersey, be it U.S. or Kenya, I, I'd still be very proud. That's when I was like, I'm, I'm going to pursue it. If I get it, that will be awesome. I can always go back and, you know, get my dual citizenship with Kenya. We have 69 individuals from 30 different countries that are represented uh, here today. And as I call your uh, native country, uh, please stand and be uh, recognized. It was, it was a very long uh, process. It took me about a year from when I did the paperwork and then it happened this past summer and I'm still very happy. I, I, I can't believe I did that and I, I'm, I'm happy with that decision. Kenya. Thank you very much. I do. Thank you very much. You are now a United States citizen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> What's that? Awesome. I finally made it. It's a moment where I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody's backs were just like, you know, something that was taken off their shoulders. It was a moment of, you know, you know, taking it in and then relaxing. God bless America and each and every one of you. Thank you very much. 
I was I was proud of him because he really deserved it. Like he worked hard to be an American citizen. I was proud of him. For me, it was more of a you know validation of him as, as an adult and, and him in maturing to, to embrace this sort of thing. And, and I felt like it was a, a really a monumental part of his life and I, I wanted to be there for him. I was really blessed to be part of that. And, and it also allowed him for the first time to go back uh, to Kenya. So he was able to go back to Kenya over Christmas, which he hadn't been able to see relatives um, since he'd left. You know, getting to go back to Kenya, that was a very big moment in my life. It, it was nine years since I've been back there, and go, going back there, seeing, my, you know, the people that I haven't seen in years, pretty much, this, these are the people that, you know, I, I forgot to say goodbye to, and I, you know, I, I, I miss greatly. It was just, everything was coming back, like, from back in the day. But some things have changed, but it's still bringing back memories. It definitely brought us closer, too. I was at home, I was at peace, I was happy, and it, it was home, it was just the way I remembered. This is, has been a part of me for almost you know, 13 years, and I get to relive it again, and that was a very special time. Yeah, we're Americans, but like, we still have like, the Kenyan inside, inside of us, like, we still speak the language, the culture is still there, like, it'll never go away. <laughs> Truly thankful for the, for the people who've made this you know, possible, so. I want to, I can't thank them enough. There's not enough I can do to, you know, thank them. And you know what? The best is yet to come, I think, right? And let me get one more. Go green! Go green.